With CSS Hero, you can actually find and make use of royalty-free images on your website. But before I show you how to do that, let me just go ahead and make some adjustments to our header because I'm going to apply some background images to the header. So I'm going to click in here inside of its container, head over to Spacings. And let's just add a lot of space at the top and the bottom. So padding top 200 pixels, padding bottom 200 pixels as well. So we now have a lot of space at the top and at the bottom. All right, I'm going to click outside. Let's head over to background. And now right here, I'm going to click on the plus button for image. And right here, you will see on splash and all the images available for you. Now, if you wanted to make use of your own images, you can click on your media. And right here, you will have immediate access to the images in your media library, or you can click on choose file to upload an image from your computer. But let's head back to on splash. So the idea here is that you can search for different kinds of images from any kind of category. As an example, I'm going to click on business, press enter. So right here, you can see we do have some images related to business. Uh, let's click on oldest. Okay, we do have one here with the uh, man with the suit. Uh, let's try sports as an example. And there you go. We do have a basketball, some people jogging. We've got someone carrying lit weights. Uh, let's try movies, okay? <laughs> let's try movies. And uh, there you go. I mean, we do have it all looks like a cinema. Uh, we do have something in here which I really don't quite recognize, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead now and search for a uh, wall. All right, press enter. So right here, you can see we have access to different uh, backgrounds. I'm going to click on the very first one in here. So to make use of this image, I'm going to use the arrow keys or the directional keys on my keyboard to move down. And now I'm going to click on apply image. And now right here, we have access to the size. How big do you want your image to be? Now, this is going to be very, very important because you typically don't want to go with the largest sizes of your image of your images unless it is absolutely necessary. The reason being that keep in mind images are content. The bigger the image is, the more time it's going to take to load that image. So one great tip to ensure your site loads as quickly as possible is to ensure that you choose the smallest sizes possible of your image. So as an example, I'm going to go with extra small. Okay. <laughs> Let's just go with extra small, close this, close this again. So right there, you can see we do have the background image. However, you might already have noticed that, wait a second, it's repeating. That is because over here we have the tile property. So if I click on the X button right here, you can see that the background image no longer repeats and it's right there at the top left hand corner of our header. We can control the position by simply coming down here to position and then choose where we want to display the image. So if you want it right there at the center, I'll just click on center and there you go. The background image is now at the center of our header. However, to the right, we now have the background size. This is different from the size of the image. This basically determines how much of the container the image is actually going to occupy. Right here in the middle, we have the two most popular values of cover and contain. Now, if I click on cover right here, notice that all of a sudden, the background image is now occupying the full width and height of its container because that's what cover does. With cover, you're saying, hey, I want the background image to always occupy the full width and height of its container. I don't care if you have to stretch the image, make it blurred for it to achieve its purpose. Just make sure the background image always occupies the full width and height of its container. That's what cover does. Contain, on the other hand, is you simply saying, at all times, display the full image. And that's exactly what contain does. Now you can see we have the full image on display, but it is not occupying its container, the full width and height of its container. So usually you want to go with cover. In my experience, cover is usually the way to go. However, if you're going to go with cover, make sure that the size of your background image is actually big enough to the point where it's not going to look blurred. In this case right now, you can see the background image looks very, very blurred because we uploaded the extra small size and now CSS is stretching the image in order for it to occupy the full width and height. So 
If I go back to the image, go back to the woods, click on apply image, let's change from extra small now to let's go with medium. Now, right there, you can see that all of a sudden, the background image no longer looks blurred. In fact, let's go back to apply image. Let's try small. So with small, you can see it's still blurred. But then right here, when we go to medium, you can see we've struck a fine balance because now with the medium size, it looks good. It's no longer blurred, but we've also chosen the smallest size possible where we can display the image without it being blurred because we could go with large as well. Large, of course, it's not going to be blurred, but keep in mind that the large size is going to be bigger than the medium size and as such will take longer for you to load. So you want to find that fine balance between displaying the image as small as possible or uploading the smallest size as possible, but also making sure that the image actually looks good on your background. So we'll stick with medium and close this. And there you go. Now, I also wanted to show you very quickly one more cool property, which is going to be the scroll property. Right now, by default, you can see when you scroll up or down, the background image will also move. But if you switch this over to fixed, now the background image will always be there at all times. It will never move. Now, one final thing to mention is that sometimes when you try applying a background image to a container that already has another background image, one way to ensure that your own background image will override that image or replace that image is right here, you have access to these three buttons. You want to go with important. You click on important and your background image will now overlap the image that existed there previously, but only use this if you have to. So this has been how to find and make use of realty free images using the OnSplash service, courtesy of your CSS Hero plugin. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have fun searching for your realty free images.